Good to see you, Master Chief Collection. Things aren't going well. 343 released you on Steam, but the wait for Halo Infinite has been excruciating. What's up, everybody? This is the Act Man here, and today, I realize I've been gone from Halo for quite some time. Yes, I have been a stubborn old Xbox boomer, unable to change with the times. But that's ancient history now. About a year and a half ago, I made a video titled, Halo is making a comeback, and I was pretty optimistic for the future of this franchise. The Infinite Reveal trailer was epic, and the announcement that every Halo game would be ported to PC delivered hope to all of us. Yes, we're going home! <laughs> and now those seeds have blossomed into a tree of some kind. But let's also not forget El Dorito. It's been over a year since the big update for that game that drew in most of the crowd. And for those of you out of the loop, Halo Online was a mod for Halo 3 being developed by 343 and Saber Interactive, meant to release only in Russia but never did officially. Some fans found the files and slapped it together, made it functional, and launched it as El Dorito. Long story short, Microsoft wasn't happy sent a cease and desist, and the El Dorito team were more or less forced to stop working on it. That was our first real taste of Halo 3 on PC, but fans have been waiting a lot longer than that. The last official game to launch on home computers was Halo 2. So after that whole debacle, Microsoft realized, okay, it's time. It's time we did something for the PC community. Shortly after, they got the ball rolling for Master Chief Collection to be ported to Steam, which is where we are today. So how have these awesome Halo games combined into one performed on PC and Steam? Do these ports live up to the expectations? Are they more than just ports? What new content has 343 added to spice things up? And has Master Chief Collection maintained its legendary comeback? Well. Let's toss aside our Xbox controllers, continue waiting for Halo Infinite, and get set for a combat drop. First things first, how has the game performed in my experience, both in player count and technically? Well, when I tried to play Reach for the first time, it felt like the classic MCC experience I remembered, in that it was kind of a disaster. On both Xbox and PC, the game would not update and I had to uninstall on both platforms and reinstall it, which took hours. When I finally got in, it was impossible to play with friends because I was bombarded with error messages every time we tried to search for a match. Stuff like, your data is out of sync with other players. We heard you didn't like Halo 4's story, would you mind waiting 10 minutes to queue into matchmaking? The worst was, can't search for a match with idling players. If you tried to queue up with friends, the game would just label everyone as idling if you weren't shaking your mouse cursor around constantly. Aside from that, search times were long in a group, we had to back out, rejoin multiple times, eventually the matchmaking did get better. On the flip side, loading into campaign missions can take upwards of 5 minutes. I'm not joking, dude. That is way too long. My OG Xbox can load Combat Evolved faster than this. Now the game has only crashed once for me and frame rate has been pretty consistent throughout. That was my initial technical experience with MCC. However, as a longtime fan of the series, this port has felt massively underwhelming. But let's focus on the good stuff first, eh Sarge? Oh, I know what the gamers like. The good stuff. 343 has done a fantastic job of putting all the pieces together in a one-stop shop for all your Halo needs. MCC's biggest strength has always been in its sheer amount of content. Every Halo campaign besides 5, you don't really need that one, with the multiplayers intact. Halo reaches Firefight, ODST Firefight is on the way. Every month or so, this package gets a little bigger just like my package. For better or worse, this is essentially the same MCC experience we already have on Xbox, but for PC and with a few new additions. Some things make it more PC friendly, you got the FOV slider, 4K resolution, HDR, improved frame rate. Simply put, the games have never looked better. 
There's quite a few little improvements in the quality of life department. It looks like stats are now displaying properly. You can actually load the leaderboards. Compare and contrast with your friends. You got Steam achievements. Although I'm pretty sure the stats have been glitched for the last six years because I have not played 252 hours worth of campaign missions. But MCC truly feels like the place for Halo fans to go and brag about their accomplishments and see what other players have done as well. Theater mode has returned, but what's new, you might ask? Well, it may have taken six years, my dudes and dudettes, but you can finally mix and match your Halo 3 armor. We did it, gamers. We ended racism and stopped World War III. Congratulations. The Reach update also brought in all the glorious armor sets and customization from that game without the need to grind credits for it. That's another thing. 343 have taken this sort of battle royale tier system that's become popular and applied it to Halo. I think it works pretty well. Makes it far less of a grind than Reach was initially, and there's even a traditional level rank. We've been asking for that for a long time. Of course, the competitive 1 to 50 ranking system as well. I hope it doesn't reset every week like it used to. And there's also going to be different seasons where you spend these tier points to unlock armor, voices, and most recently, skins for Halo CE. <laughs> Say what? That's kind of weird, but I think it's cool. Alongside this are all sorts of challenges, daily, weekly. That's right, you have more reasons than one to grind this game. And it feels satisfying to unlock new things without paying for them. No microtransactions? Oh my god! Thank goodness they added classic CE sound effects as well. I have no idea why that wasn't a thing before, but there were slight differences in the sniper rifle and other weapons that was just weird. But overall, what 343 has excelled in is the quality of life giving players incentives to grind the game. They've made MCC more accessible with a better user interface, expanded customization. They've nailed it. Now how's the gameplay? Not gonna lie, I was very skeptical about enjoying Halo on PC. I mean, come on guys, I've been around this franchise for like 18 years. I've played all this countless times before. What else is left for me? It's not going to be the same without my Duke controller, but my skepticism soon disappeared. And I realized it's incredible how switching from controller to mouse and keyboard can totally change how a 13 year old game feels. It took a little bit of time to relearn the controls, but within 10 minutes or so, I felt right at home. In fact, I even felt like my shots were way more accurate. Although I'll never be as good as those jackal snipey boys. <laughs> Above all else, Halo 3 and Reach prove that the series should have always had a place on PC. You know, something inside me just swelled with emotion and joy when I dropped into Sierra 117. It was foreign and felt brand new to me. When it comes to Halo 3, dude, I cannot believe how good this game looks to this day. And the graphics are only amplified on PC. The same goes for the other titles. Gameplay for the multiplayer, essentially the same. Ah, so much fun duking it out on the hills of Valhalla, fighting across the dunes of Sand Trap. With PC controls, man, aiming feels so precise. The Banshee especially controls like the flying monstrosity it was always meant to be. Vehicles feel better, weapons feel better, all the DLC maps are packaged in. Once more, MCC is the ultimate place for Halo fans. Although, at the end of the day, I'm having the exact same experiences and fun I've had for years with MCC and before MCC. And what I've come to realize is this port wasn't made for me. This was made for people who have never experienced the Halo games, never had an Xbox. I'm happy for all of you. This is for everyone who wanted these games on their computer. Me, however, I want something new. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm disappointed. When the news of MCC coming to PC was announced, I personally had really high expectations. Unrealistic expectations that El Dorito gave me. 
This mod is a huge part of the story, because after El Dorito surged in popularity, Microsoft became hard pressed to meet the demand that these modders had already met to fans. Essentially, it was the Blizzard, WoW Classic, Nostalrius debacle, but to a lesser degree. In its heyday, El Dorito was a magical time. It had been so long since I had this feeling of pure elation around Halo. This was a sensation I hadn't experienced since the SPV3 mod, and further back when Reach originally launched in 2010. Now, I have always been excited for major releases in this franchise, but each one always came with a caveat. But El Dorito was the perfect blend of AAA polish from Saber Interactive and new content and quality of life improvements from the modders. If you played Halo Online at all, you know that there are a ton of innovative features we had never seen before in a Halo game. Features that 343 would be lauded as geniuses if they implemented them. <sighs> but most of them have not. I understand. 343 is still working on MCC and that mod support is eventually coming. But as of right now, the Master Chief Collection leaves a lot to be desired for longtime Halo fans. Also, important disclaimer, just because I say, hey, I think this one thing would work really well and be insanely fun and awesome, the implementation isn't always as simple as that. I understand game design is complex, but that doesn't stop me from wanting these things, you know? And I think 343 has done an incredible job. They accomplished what Bungie never tried, and they've been very open and communicative with the development and timeline. Additionally, the price is extremely fair, especially if you only want one of the games in particular, just 10 bucks. Despite this, I can't help but feel like the Master Chief Collection on Steam is a series of missed opportunities. And to understand why, let's just compare what a group of modders were able to create versus a fully formed AAA studio backed by Microsoft. Check out El Dorito. What's this? A sexy ass server browser filled with all sorts of custom games and traditional multiplayer? Some hosted by bots and others real players? What? With a, dare I say it? Map voting? Whoa, 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 you see this? I can adjust the placement of my weapon to the stupidest position possible. Wee! I'm doing it, Ma. I'm playing Halo. Good Lord, look at that. It's Godzilla. It sure is awesome being able to adjust the scale of the player for custom games. And where did all these crazy weapons come from? What? What the hell? All these variants are unique? Oh my God, it's like Halo 3, but brand new. Yet it still feels like Halo 3. Oh my goodness, the level of customization within the interface is insane. I have so many options. El Dorito was so much damn fun and shows just how helpful and innovative the community can be when they have the tools to build upon the foundation of these games. But beyond this greatness is an actual contender to Halo 5's Forge. In El Dorito, you can create maps beyond the normal boundaries. There's something new for you right there. You can change the skybox to any other map. Look at this, it's, it's insane. The Forge has exposure settings to adjust the brightness if you want a darker or brighter environment. A lot of the features in here aren't even in Halo 5 to my knowledge. You're allowed to create the same objects in every map with no restrictions. The amount of items you can place in your maps has been increased from the baseline Halo 3. You could potentially hop into Guardian and add a whole new section to it. You can create things with interactive elements. These gates, the destructible bridge. Oh my god, it's so awesome. You can craft all sorts of blocks, choose from a series of different skins to give it a unique appearance. Magnetism makes it easier to align things. Bro, you can even put flyable pelicans on the map. You can throw an elephant on Guardian. There were no restrictions for what you could do. This is what I want. I would love to pay for this. Now back to MCC, what did 343 do? Well, it's Halo 3 again. 
couple new items, small tweaks to make placing things more precise. That's it. Like, there's no contest. These games are so old, you have to try new things. I get it. This is a port, not a remaster, remake, or whatever. But I'm disappointed at the lack of community features, new things to do. I mean, how long can we keep selling these old Halo games without reinventing them at all? And I know, I'm kind of comparing apples to oranges, but I firmly believe the wacky craziness of El Dorito would have worked beautifully alongside a traditional Halo 3 multiplayer. Have all the weird weapons and shit from that pay to win version, have that on a server browser, just like Warcraft 3 and Starcraft would do. You had a place for people who wanted the core multiplayer, and a place for people who wanted to play the more creative custom games. I can't believe I created this gigantic zombies map virtually on my own. Forging in this game was efficient, fun, and satisfying. The interface in El Dorito is better than MCC. More intuitive, user friendly, more options. It's been 13 years yet the UI in Halo 3 is almost identical. Not sure why they have these menus that force you to scroll for two minutes. You know, the biggest question that's come to my mind is why are all these amazing assets and brand new maps from Halo Online just sitting around collecting dust? These maps were built from the ground up. They play phenomenally. Can we play them? Imagine the amount of press and hype Microsoft would generate by being like, yo, it's Halo 3, but check it out. We made these new maps, got these new weapons, new, 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 everything's new but the old is still there. Ah, well, an act man can dream, right? Now in regards to possible mod support and all that, the El Dorito team has not been directly involved with the technical design of MCC because, and I quote, their experience in modding is not needed at this time. Take that in whatever direction you want, but it's sad to me. You can download mods from Nexus, but it's usually stuff that expands the forge and reach or revamps certain single player missions, and it's not official. Halo has been in desperate need of something new. El Dorito was that something. It was refreshing, yet still had the feel, look, and design of a classic Halo game. The forging capabilities were perfected, and I don't care how unrealistic it is of me to want this type of stuff in an official Halo game. I think it's the right way to go. Even though Sketch has confirmed mod support and modding tools are on the roadmap, there's no telling how long that's going to take. Which brings me to my next point. The release schedule of MCC has made me quite worried about sustainability. Halo CE was launched out of the blue, the player count went up, and then it went down. At some point the player count went below 5000 which is abysmal. It's since picked up, but... It's scary. I understand the thought process and rolling out features and games over time. Nobody wants to relive the original MCC launch, but the population charts seem to fluctuate and lose people before the next game is launched and it picks back up again. Ideally, having all the features come out at the same time would create a better foundation for a sustained and healthy player base, but maybe it just wasn't feasible. It seems like people get excited at first, maybe dump 10, 20, 30 hours in the multiplayer, replay the campaign, but then the novelty wears off and they go try something else. Point being, these are the same games people have already paid and played before. So I've been genuinely worried about how MCC is going to perform. Although 343 have maintained support for this game for over six years and it will always have a hardcore and dedicated community. As far as other issues, uh, you've got these fuckwits out there who will just AFK for the rewards and ruin matches, as well as people going out of their way to shoot teammates without killing them and exploiting the boot system. Bro, these issues have been here for years. Why wasn't 343 able to create a better way to track players who are being assholes? You know, also would have been helpful if there was a join in progress feature implemented. Even back in the day, so many matches were ruined by quitters. 
leaving teams unbalanced, and the game becomes a test of patience as you wait out the clock for this 2v7 match to end. All in all, there is a ton of fun to be had with the Master Chief Collection on PC, but there is also a lot that worries me. Revisiting the multiplayer and campaigns has been a blast. The customization has been expanded, but what it comes down to is I've played all this before. I've seen and done it all. Without some major monumental innovation or change, I'm not going to stay interested. If 343 waits too long to implement a server browser, more community features, modding capabilities, Halo MCC will remain the same experience it's been for over five years. When I think about all the potential the Master Chief Collection has, this release just feels like one big missed opportunity. So those are my thoughts on MCC, but what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments down below. Well, like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to The Act Man for more awesome content. That's all I got for today. This is The Act Man, signing out. Peace!